House of Squibb presents Academy Award. Tonight, Rex Harrison in Night Train. Every week, Squibb brings you Hollywood's finest. The great picture plays, the great actors and actresses, techniques and skills chosen from the honor roll of those who have won or been nominated for the famous Golden Oscar of the Academy of Motion Picture Arts and Sciences. For generations, the House of Squibb has been known for the high quality and unfailing dependability of its products, each the result of a never-ending quest for perfection. Today, the great family of Squibb products reflects the tremendous advance of science in its contribution to human health and well-being. The name Squibb stands for progress through research. Squibb is a name you can trust. Tonight, Squibb brings to Academy Award the well-known screen actor Rex Harrison. You will hear Mr. Harrison in the role he created for the screen in the thrilling mystery Night Train, the picture which, for the best original screen story of the year, was nominated for the 1941 Academy Award. <laughs> real name is Randall, but I, I was known once as Major Herzog. I have a number somewhere around the place and some newspaper clippings and a, and a medal. Yes, I have about everything one needs, including nightmares, to remind me that not so long ago I was one of those calm, nerveless chaps the books describe as a British agent. Right now, I'm addicted to gardening, and I propose to cultivate the gentle passion for the rest of my days. Unless, of course, they need me, which God forbid. My little excursion into darkest intrigue began about the time Mr. Chamberlain's umbrella failed to open at Munich, and we entered that Gilbert and Sullivan era known then as the phony war. Now, believe me, there was nothing phony about mine. Oh, uh, hello, Randall. How are you? Fine. Sorry to bring you down to London tonight. We must apologize, too, for all the secrecy, but we've got a crisis again. I know. Uh, we were just discussing the Beaumarsh affair. Yes, I... Uh, you slipped up badly there, didn't you? Uh, yes. Uh... Yes, uh, we needed Beaumarsh, frightfully, you know. And after all our trouble in getting him away from the Nazis and out of Germany, you let them come along and steal him away from under your nose. Yes, well, you see, they were, they were very convincing, posed as officers in the Royal Navy, and said they were to take him to dinner aboard Admiral Somebody's ship. Uh, they dined him all right, but aboard one of their U-boats. Yeah, I, uh, I underestimated their nerve. Well, the war office has been stinking about it. They take the view that this armor plating of Beaumarsh's will make all the difference in the coming war. And by tomorrow night, Beaumarsh will be in Berlin, where they won't lose any time in putting the screws on the poor devil. Tomorrow night? That means he won't be at the Admiralty until, let's see, uh, Saturday morning. Well, that's about it. Why? Nearly 48 hours. What are you driving at? Well, they got him out of England. Why shouldn't we get him back? Oh, but that's quite impossible. Why? I know my way about. Speak German like a stormtrooper. I spent five years in Berlin. We might be in a shooting war before you get back. You know what that would mean. Yes, sir. Well, you know perfectly well I can't give you permission to do it, and the fact that you make such a proposal shows you're obviously not yourself. You agree? Well, uh, I quite agree with you. Uh, well, Randall, I suggest you take a week's sick leave. Uh, take a complete change of air. Well, I must say this is mighty sporting of you, Randall, patriotic and all that. The highest tradition of the service. Right. Oh, it's, 
Nothing so noble as all that. And after all, gentlemen, I did block my copybook a bit. And, and, and then, of course, there's uh, this Beaumash's daughter. Really? I say. A touch of romance, eh? <laughs> well, sort of. Uh, gentlemen, I'll need some letters of introduction and that sort of thing. And, and oh, yes, is there someone about who could draw up my will? <laughs> It wasn't really so bad uh, getting into their benighted country. I had some wonderful credentials, a beautiful uniform and the manners of a pig. My German was excellent and my Heil Hitlers were things of beauty. I called upon Commander Kampenfeld at the Admiralty in Berlin. This is to introduce to you Major Ulrich Herzog of Corps Engineers. Major Herzog is in Berlin an important technical mission for which he requires Admiralty assistance. I want to refer to certain technical evidence given before the Naval Heavy Armaments 1935 Committee. If you will let me have a copy of the report, Commander. Uh, certainly, Major. Uh, it will take only a moment. I have my own filing system here. Um, have you been in Berlin long, Major Herzog? Nine. I only left the Siegfried Line last Tuesday. Mm, things must be pretty hectic there. Ah, yeah. Yeah, indeed. I was there in a consultative capacity, uh, steel fortifications, you possibly have heard. Oh, yes, 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 of course. Uh, how is our steel? Crop plating is poor. That is why I am in Berlin. Do you realize that the steel used by the Czechs is better than anything we have got? Mm -hmm. But uh, surely now that we control the scholar works? Not enough. We let the only man who counted there slip through our fingers. Beaumarsh. Yeah, wonderful fellow on armor plating. Produced incredible results. And where is he? Working for Britain. No. Beaumash is no longer in England. What? He was brought back to Germany only a few hours ago. In fact, Major, he's in this building right now. Well, this completely alters my plans. Perhaps you can arrange for me to see Herr Beaumash at once. I'm afraid it is impossible. But surely there is no harm in my asking him a few questions. It is beyond my province, Major. If you uh, could get permission from Admiral van Hassinger, but uh, <laughs> nine, his office is like a kingdom of heaven. And if anything, a little bit more exclusive. But you do not mind trying, Commander. After all, I've always felt I'd more or less earned the right to get one foot at least in heaven. <laughs> Anna, it is useless for your father to resist us like this. You must persuade him. You will both be given reasonable freedom. Freedom? Here? In time, you will see things the way I do, the way everyone in Germany does. I'm not a German. Oh, Germany is as much your country as it is ours. We don't hate the Czechs. We only wish to protect them. And you are protecting the people of Poland? That's enough. You have gone too far, Fräulein Beaumarsh. You will be placed in a concentration camp until your father come to his senses. Must, must you drag my daughter into this? Achtung, the chief of naval staff, Vice Admiral von Hassinger. Well, Karl Maaßen, is this the way the Gestapo conducts a meeting? Here, Beaumarsh wringing his hands, his daughter in tears. Come, man, there must be more persuasive methods of getting valuable cooperation. Excellency, yes. Uh, oh, never mind. This is Major Herzog, Corps of Engineers. Perhaps you've heard of him, the man behind the Siegfried line. Eh, Herzog? Only one of the men, sir. The Führer is responsible for the line as he is responsible for everything else. Hitler. Herr Hitler! I'd like to have your report, Marson, now. Certainly, Admiral. You will uh, remember me, Herr Beaumash? I did not expect you to see you again so soon. And you, Fräulein Beaumarsh? I see you have not forgotten. It must be four years. Oh, yes. It must be. Just a moment, Major. I'm sorry, but I must ask Herr Beaumarsh and Fräulein Beaumarsh to step into the other room. Guard, take them away. This way. Maybe we will meet again, Gnädiges Fräulein. I thought it unwise, sir, to speak in front of Beaumarsh. So far, we've made no impression on him. I do not agree. 
He looks ten years older. Beaumash is not the one to be bullied in the cooperation. No? What would you suggest? I knew Fräulein Beaumash in Prague. She has a great influence on her father and is the one person who can make him change his mind. Oh, Marson here has tried that. He's our Gestapo man who got the Beaumarshes out of England under the very noses of British military intelligence. My congratulations, sir. Thank you, sir. But if I may say so, I do not think Herr Marson is a suitable person to influence the lady. Then who do you think would be more suitable? Uh, myself, for instance. You? Why not? You saw the way she looked at me when I came in. I think if you were to spend a few hours with her, I might induce her to, to reason with her father. You knew her that well in Prague? It was uh, spring, sir. Well, I think you're something of a dog, Major. <clears throat> I doubt, sir, whether the Major's qualities will make an impression on her, sir. I did not know that you were acquainted with my qualities, sir. Well, we let him try at no harm done. If he doesn't succeed, leave all the arrangements to me. This requires knowledge of maneuvers, eh, Major? Oh, quite, Admiral. Definitely. Good luck. Heil Hitler. Heil Hitler! Well, so far, so good. Miraculously good. I went to the hotel where the Beaumashes were kept prisoners. I convinced them, especially Anna, that she'd have to play up to me to behave as if we were renewing an old love affair that began in Prague in the spring. Anna tells me now, when I get around to asking her, that she was only acting then. But of course, that's the way of wives, isn't it? Anyway, I wasn't acting my part at all. I meant it. Oh, one more thing. I shall have to spend the night here. That is necessary. Yes, yes, the place is absolutely crawling with Gestapo. Uh, have you any sporting instinct? Why? I'll toss you who takes the couch in the other room. You behave as if this were all a joke. Don't you realize how much depends on our getting out of Germany? No good, it's been no good being intense about it. I don't like the, the facing a firing squad any better than you do. What do you mean? England may be at war with Germany tomorrow. Oh. Now just keep trying. Try to pretend you find me unbearably attractive. <laughs> If a woman ever loved you like you love yourself, it would be history. Now what? I'll take it. Hello? German Admiralty. Hello? Yeah? Herzog here. Yes, yeah, sir? Sorry to disturb you at this hour, Major Herzog. We have had to alter our plans. Orders have come from Munich that Bormash is to go there by first plane. But this is ridiculous. Cannot that be delayed for a few hours? Impossible. The plane leaves in an hour. Führer's orders. Heil Hitler. What is happening? They're sending your father to Munich at once. There's only one chance. Leave this hotel. Scuttle. It's an old German custom. But the guard's downstairs. We got into the Admiralty. And we'll get out of here. Get your clothes together. I'll tell your father. We leave in five minutes. <laughs> I have been instructed, sir, to leave immediately with Herr Bumash. I shall not require you. Very well, sir. Shall I get you a taxi, sir? I will call one myself. Wait. Steady. We've got to act as if you were under Hitler's orders. Look, we're trapped. Gestapo chief, Herr Marsen. Well. Well? I didn't expect you to be here in the lobby waiting, Major. I'm ordered to escort Herr Bumash and his daughter to Munich. Really? The controller phoned me a few minutes ago and I was about to drive them to the Admiralty myself. Orders were changed, sir. We are to take the train. Of course, the, the train. It leaves in 50 minutes. Very well. We are ready. You, sir? Certainly. Were you not told? I have the Admiral's authority to travel with them. You see, he feels it essential that Herr Boma should be persuaded to comply with our wishes before he reaches headquarters. I was progressing extremely well with Fräulein Beaumarsch when this happened. I see. Very good, sir. Yes, excellent. This way, Herr Beaumarsch, your arm. My car, Fräulein. The Führer is waiting.
And now the House of Squibb presents part two of Academy Award, starring Rex Harrison in Night Train. What is the matter, Herr Maaßen? This is not a scheduled stop for the express. I do not know, sir. Very unusual. But then these are unusual times. If you will escort Fräulein and Herr Bomash, I'll find out the trouble. Of course. Come, my dear, we've got to get off here. But, darling, I thought the Führer was in such a hurry for us to arrive in Munich. Shh, one doesn't question the vagaries of the Führer. I beg your pardon, Major. What was that you said? I said one does not question the orders of the Führer. Of course not. Heil Hitler. Heil Hitler. Watch your step, Fräulein. This way, Herr Bomash. I say, um, did you notice that German officer who just came out of the train? Yes, Caldecott. Why? Well, my dear Charters, I could have sworn it was old Dickie Randall. We were at Bailey together. He played for the gentleman once. Really? Hmm. But if he's a German officer, how could he be Dickie Randall? Huh? Oh, here they come. Why don't you ask him, old boy? Yes, I shall, old boy. Ah. I say, um, excuse me, old boy, but um, aren't you old Dickie Randall? Mayor Hutzog, Corps of Engineers. Oh, oh right, sorry. Dash it, I, I must say he looked like old Dickie. It's extraordinary. That man, you know him? Yes, Helicor Caldicott. It was close. What will happen when we get to Munich? The car will be waiting. Probably a big crowd. I shall ask for a second car so we can be alone. Suppose they don't give it to us. They will, because by that time we shall be on the verge of persuading your father to work for Germany. But you, on the other hand, must be asking for time to think. Do you get the idea? Yes, but how can we... All we have, the, uh, only the chauffeur to deal with, and after that, Switzerland. Switzerland? Long way from Munich. The only way out of this fortress. We shall have to make it. <laughs> I say, uh, do you know why we stopped, old man? No, I don't. Why? Oh, I just had it from a train man. Old England's declared war. Not really. Hmm. I say, I want to put a call through to Berlin. Oh? Why? Oh, I left my golf sticks there. Can't leave them behind just because of war on you, know. Oh, here's a booth. Oh, excuse me. That German chap in there, that's the one with old Dickie. If it was old Dickie. I say, try this extension. Yes, sir. This is Martin reporting, sir. I say, listen. Good. Major Herzog is not known to the war office. No officer of that name on the list. We believe him to be an enemy agent. Yes, sir. You will carry on with him to Munich. Let him think he's getting away with it. We will be waiting for you there. Very good. Heil Hitler. Interesting, what? Very. Herzog isn't Herzog. And they're going to do him in when we get to Munich. Then if old Herzog isn't old Herzog, the chap might be... Right! Yes. He might jolly well be old Dickie Randall. Joe! All aboard! Uh, wash my hand. I say, um, if, if you're Dickie Randall, old chap, you're batting on a sticky wicket. All right, Caldicott, I got your note. What is it? Oh, this is Charters, an old friend of mine. How do you do? Uh, how do you do? Frightfully crowded here, what? Uh, what's it about? Well, I, I was phoning Berlin for my golf clubs when old Charters overheard that chap you were with. Looks like a Gestapo chap. He is a Gestapo chap. You know they're sending a military escort to rest you in Munich. Yes, yes. You see, you see, you're Randall. R um, Randall, aren't you? Yes, of course you are. And, and they know that you're not Herzog. Now, listen. I can't tell you everything. There isn't time. 
But I've got to get that old man and the girl out of the country at all costs. What, an official job? Are you two fellows going to help me? What, against Germany? Absolutely, old man. Backs to the wall. Rather! Line? Is the tea left? Yes, I think so, Albert. There's no time for tea. We are coming into the Munich station. Ah, enough of this comedy. There is no such person as Major Herzog. He is a British agent trying to get you and your father out of Germany. Ulrich! Forget the Ulrich, darling. The Gestapo knows everything. Thank you. You're, you're going to give yourself up? Looks like it, Herr Bomash. Don't you realize what this means? Yes, I do, but he's got a gun and I haven't. What you take me for, Bulldog Drummond? Oh, I told you this would happen. Your scheme was absolutely childish. Why didn't you stay in England instead of coming over here and deliberately throwing your life away? You fool. Thank you, my sweet. Look out. No! Ah! Shut up, Gestapo. I'll give you that gun and get to sleep. Oh, that was so fast. Oh, yes, well, I can move once in a while. Uh, you uh, called for the guard, Major Herzog? Basically fit these Nazi uniforms, eh? Okay, call the cut charters. You can carry the Gestapo into another compartment and lock the door. Very good, sir. I say, it looks like we've struck a blow for old England already, eh? <laughs> Come on, lift him up, call the cut. There's a good fellow. Where are the Nazi guards? Oh, well, we find it, found it very necessary to drop them off in the tunnel. Uh, probably never be found. Uh, the military escort is coming. What do we do now? We bluff it through. I'll order Caldicott to drive. Then we'll make a dash for Switzerland. Heil Hitler. Heil Hitler. Orders from the 5th Army Headquarters for the arrest of Major Herzog. I fear you will need a stretcher. A prisoner tried to escape and I had to deal with him. You will find him in the last compartment, coach 66. What transport have you? Two cars, sir. Excellent. I should take one. I am under orders to escort Herr and Fräulein Bomash to General von Klontisch without delay. Very good, sir. Coach 66, you said, sir. Right. That will be all. Heil Hitler. Heil Hitler. I say, old Dickie, we're being followed. Of course. I may be a bit silly, but uh, how do we get across the Swiss frontier? Narrow road leads up to the top of the mountain. Oh, what's over the top? Switzerland. Anything in between? 6,000 feet drop. They're gaining on us. <laughs> Shooting, I say, they can't do that. I hope you're right. Now, hold on. We turn here for the summit. Never mind the car. We've gained about five minutes on them. Here's the cable car. You mean we have to cross in that basket? That or nothing, darling. Yes, sir. We want to cross to Switzerland. Sorry, sir. We are at war. I had orders yesterday to close the cable car. You have new orders from Gestapo headquarters in Munich. Yes, sir. But I must phone for verification. That, that'll have to be your verification. Now, in you go, darling. You too, Herr Bomash, quickly. I, I, I say, uh, do we know how to operate this thing now? Uh, perhaps we shouldn't have shot that chap. Well, we'll, we'll run it somehow. You chaps better pile in. I'll start the mechanism and try to keep these, those Nazis off until you get across. No, nothing stirring, old bean. All or nothing. We'll stay. Eh, Charters? Of course. Nothing else a chap can do. Back to the wall. Now, come on, get started. You, chap, you chaps go in with the others. Carry on for me if anything happens. Remember, the bow mashes must get to England. No, no, I won't leave without you. Now, get in and shut up. I'm starting the motors. We can't leave you. Couldn't run out on old Dickie. Get going. That's an order. Darling. I'll be waiting. Look out, Randall! Here they come! Get the man in the control room! Yeah. You others shoot down the cable car basket! Kill them all! I won't leave here till I know what has happened to him. But, my dear, we can't stay overnight atop this mountain, even if we are in Switzerland. Poor old Dickie. They must have got him. Well, the shooting has stopped. I think we'd better carry on. Orders he gave, you know. 
Take the Beaumarshes to England. Yes, yes, right you are. It seemed a shame, though, to leave old Dickie's body on Kraut's soil. After all, you know, he, he played for the gentleman. But we don't know what happened. The fog closed down. We can't see a cross. Oh, it's no fog, old girl. It's a cloud. A big old cumulus nosing around. Listen. I say it. I say it. It's the, it's the old cable car. Maybe those chaps mean to come across after us. Uh, I, I wish I had a gun. Now, take it easy, Mr. Beaumarsh. We'll give them a bit of a reception. Hey, Caldecott. I used to shoot with the guards, you know. Uh, get back, girl. Get back. We'll need all the room. Take a position, Charters. Right, I'm ready. And shoot when you see the red tips of their snouts. Steady on. Here it comes. Blast that cloud in our way. It's coming out of the cloud. Steady. Give them a hail, old boy. Halt there, I say, or we shall commence hostilities. I can't see anyone for the cloud. Look out for a trick. Darling, are you there? Hello, darling. Oh, you can give me a hand. Dickie, but Harry, how did you get away from them? Pull me out of this thing and then cut the cables. You ready? Oh, not for questions now. Grab his hand. Now, Charters, I'll blast the cable when he's safe aground. Hurry it up. We can't, we can't take forever. Well, here we are, Dickie. Grab my hand. Here we go. Look out, look out. Here goes the cable. Well, I... I guess that takes care of everything. Except... Oh, darling. Yes, except the bride. You may tell the papers that the bride wore Edelweiss and the, medging, medding, the wedding march was yodeled by the quaint peasants in Alpine Attar. Ah, oh, we shall shove off. Old England's quite a walk from here. a new adventure and refreshment awaiting you in every tube of Squib Dental Cream. Until you try Squib Dental Cream yourself, you'll never know how pleasant or exhilarating a dentifrice can be. Its name tells you that Squib Dental Cream is a safe, pure, effective aid to better cleansing. But let your senses tell you how exhilarating Squib Dental Cream is. Brush it into lively mint-frosted foam and note how Squib Dental Cream not only helps to brighten your smile that leaves your whole mouth feeling young and alive, contributing to your sense of well-being. Too much to expect of a dentifrice? Not when it's Squib Dental Cream, one of the great family of Squib products. So give your charm the protection it deserves, the protection of pure, fragrant Squib Dental Cream. Taste, feel, and see the refreshing difference. Next Wednesday, another great picture. The House of Squib will present Academy Award starring Greer Garson in Brief Encounter. Today's performance of Night Train was written for radio by Frank Wilson with an original musical score composed and conducted by Leith Stevens. Our producer-director is D. Engelbach. Rex Harrison appeared through the courtesy of 20th Century Fox and may soon be seen in their production of The Ghost and Mrs. Muir. This is Hugh Brundage bidding you good night until next Wednesday at the same time when you're invited to listen again to Academy Award presented by the House of Squibb, a name you can trust. This is CBS, the Columbia Broadcasting System.